Today I'm looking at the extruders in my printer. You can see that, uh, unfortunately, that broke off, but happens once in a while in PLA. Um, I've made one change on this, and I've taken the um, thermistor and the uh, uh, the hot end wires, and I use these little Molex connectors to uh, so I can take the uh, the the the, um, the hot ends and, and the extruders off of the printer. Um, so I'm doing a modification today because I've got this problem, and let me zoom in and I'll show you. Looking at, at the edge of the printer, this I had you can see I could put some uh, fiberglass insulation underneath the bed to keep it, you know, stable to keep breeze from from going underneath it. And uh, this is fairly safe because it can't can support combustion unless you add a whole lot of oxygen and heat. Anyway, um, so looking under, underneath here, you can see that one print head is higher than the other, and um, so originally I bought this printer, I wanted one for soluble filament and another for non-soluble filament, but as time goes on, I, I, I'm doing so much switching between ABS, PLA and P, ABS, I wanted to have this um, extruder be for um, a, uh, PLA and this one to be for ABS. It's a big problem, and because of the way it mounts onto the... Uh, there's a little bracket in here, and I'll take this off and I'll show you. So I've got a little a T Allen wrench, and I'm going to reach behind here, and uh, there's two three millimeter screws. Sorry about the reach. I generally just leave the screws kind of hanging. I've got a little piece of something to protect the build surface. Um, if you're sharp-eyed and if the angle's right, you might see that this is actually printed on an angle. Um, the original one of these was printed in, in PLA, and when I, pr I noticed when I printed and closed that this part just got too warm, so I replaced this with ABS. This part is actually bad. I've got a replacement, but I'm not going to do it until I replace these bearings, and um, that's another project. Anyway, we're looking at the bottom of the extruders. I still have the wires attached, but... Uh, with some effort, I can unplug those. And uh, the reason why I chose these connectors is they were rated for uh, a decent amount of current. I also usually have a strain relief here, and um, for the um, for the wires. Also, I've got to remove the fan. Although this is better than stock, it's still suboptimal because I still have to do a, a, a clip, I believe, to one zip tie to get this out. And now I'll take out these two. I think these are two and a half millimeters. Get the fan off. I don't do much with the fan. And the fan helps with uh, small prints and PLA. Very fussy prints. I believe it helps a lot. But, um... Oddly enough, I really... I mean, I left the fan on automatic. I don't... The thing is, with ABS, I think it could be more of a, an enemy than a friend. Um... But with PLA, PLA, and like if you do the one millimeter square, you know, you know, cube, then the um, then the heat tends to build up, and you end up with not such a beautiful print. Anyway, so I'll unplug this too. Unfortunately, these are unplugs. Get this out of the way. Unfortunately, I already pre-broke this by accident. Okay, looking at this, you can see that. Wow, I've got. Uh, I have uh, one of these guys is actually loose. This isn't the cl this you know these aren't a clamp or anything. So looking under here, it's a little messier than I thought it would be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these back in and heat up the hot ends to uh, and then take a stiff wire brush and clean them off. There might actually not be enough of a dynamic range to read this, but I'm going to go into the menu here. I'm going to I'm going to um, click on prepare and uh, and I'm going to preheat. Uh, PLA, which most of this is PLA, and I'm going to uh, click on preheat PLA all. Unfortunately, this is going to get warm. I put a board across the uh, linear ways and a little pad on top of a board. Now the uh, print head should be heated up, and I'm going to take a, these, they have these little wire brushes, and I believe they're real brass. Um, these are from, from Harbor Freight, but I think you can get them elsewhere. Um, so, um, I got this idea from somebody on a Thingiverse had not, had a, a, a thing that could be mounted to your printer and so for automatic, uh, pr uh, uh extruder in uh, print head cleaning. Um, the thing about it is I couldn't use it on this printer, couldn't be adapted, there's just not enough room for it, but, um, still the idea of using a wire brush to clean the print head is pretty good. And the things you really have to be careful not to burn yourself, maybe even be better to, uh, 
to wear gloves. And uh, I don't think children should be doing this. And, uh, and, or, you know, teenagers shouldn't do it supervised. But I think I like the whole glove idea. But once you get heated up, you can see that you can get this off pretty good. And you want to avoid the wires and stuff. And so it cleans it up pretty good. And uh, I had ordered some, um, you know, the little insulation um, from uh, Amazon. And it turned out not to be what they said it was. They said it was going to be uh, basically fiberglass. And it wasn't fiberglass. It was, uh, it was like, probably like paper fiber because it's scorched. And uh, so I need to get a good look on it, at this. I'm going to try to get the threads a little bit too. Um, I noticed that one of these uh, heaters is uh, loose too. I wish they clamped. There are some variants that clamp. And this is just the, extr the original extruder for the printer. Before I do anything else, I'm going to let the printer cool down. With the uh, print head disconnected again, I'm going to remove these. There's um, some 4 millimeter screws that hold this on, which only thread into aluminum, so you never want to get these too tight. Oh, well, parts tray helps too. Which will release this bracket. These are called midget combination wrenches, and they used to be called ignition wrenches for some reason. And I guess they used to use them for ignition systems on cars when you had mechanical points and so forth. Anyway, they're these are a nice size for working on 3D printers because they're very dainty, and I like these. Yeah. So I'm going to undo the uh, nut for the number two extruder, the uh, jam nut. Like so. You don't have to be very, uh, you don't have to spin it down all the way. And then I can probably just sneak this by here. Of course, it's no good for the wires, but it works. This is one of the things I don't like about this system. And that uh, this is no way to treat... Uh, you know, wires that get hot. And uh, hypothetically, you could pull this out. Then you have to undo whatever strain relief you have on here. I don't know. This is suboptimal. But uh, I can't see myself doing this a lot, many more times. Anyhow, I've released the, uh, this is the little tube. I'm trying to see the lining. This actually looks like, oddly enough, this doesn't seem like it's Teflon lined. Um, which is interesting. I see steel in there, or stainless steel as it were. What this modification allows is the uh, extruder to be raised and lowered um, in relationship to one another. And uh, hypothetically, you should only have to do this to one, but I'm going to do it to both anyhow for just to you know keep things the same. And then you tighten up the jam nut like so once you get to where you want it. So I got one, one, this is a six millimeter internal thread jam nut and one washer to, to suit it. I'm not using lock washers because I think it'll throw it off as far as I'm thinking that it would tilt it in. If you look right here, you can see that this um, extrusion tube is flush with this part right here. And uh, this is internally threaded and only into aluminum. I'm sure it's anodized. Um, also, you can see where I modified this to keep it from hitting. Anyway, this is only threaded in here in, into aluminum. And this is stainless steel, so it's hypothetically possible for you to be able to strip this out. So if this is much below the surface, then you maybe you shouldn't do this modification without getting another tube because you don't want to ruin this. At the same time, these things, um, these parts aren't that expensive now. You don't want to put too tight because you will go up the aluminum, but you it will be thermally cycling, so you've got to put it kind of, kind of tight. I needed to do two other simple modifications to make this work. The first is that there's a little aluminum plate here that mounts the extruder into this metal plate. And um, the problem is that I needed to flip this upside down and get longer screws. So this screw is now um, a four millimeter screw that's 12 or 15 millimeters might work. And uh, you just don't want any contact in here. As you can see, there's another little problem right here in that this screw um, is in, in, in risk of contacting this. So looking at the extruder there's a screw from the bottom that keeps the spring from popping out it might actually do something else but i doubt it and then there's a little screw here that forms a, a simple cup and um, then this screw actually applies the force to make it adjustable so what i'm going to do is replace this screw here and uh, first thing i'm going to do is take a note on what this distance is here 
and um, you could uh, use you just count the threads or you can use a little caliper feel your gauges if you wish or you could um, I know I'm just eyeing in this and um, and I know there's probably about four or five threads there uh, notwithstanding I'm gonna take I'm gonna take an Allen wrench I'm trying to do this in the camera is interesting and loosen this up quite a bit and um, that and then and then I'm going to take and take the screw out of the bottom like this. And this is a three millimeter screw. The one on the top is a four millimeter screw. And I'm going to take this out. And you could see that this is probably, probably like, you know, 15 millimeters long. And um, what I'm going to do is um, remove the screw and this little uh, there's a screw here and a little spring. And then I'm going to get a f um, about. This is probably five, five, seven, five or seven millimeters. After I spin out this um, screw that goes on the top, which is exceedingly long, um, I'm going to just thread this, this screw in here by placing a little Allen wrench through the top like this. And this is kind of a lazy way to do it. That way I don't have to mess around with these bearings. I love how these things twirl. And I just give it just a snug. You know, I mean, I don't kill This is only going to aluminum. Granted, it's hard anodized coated, but uh, once you strip it, it's stripped. And I believe that this will still be enough of root of, um, of uh, a base to keep the spring from popping out. And then just replace the adjuster. Like so. I'm trying to keep it right so you, so you don't lose track of what I'm doing like so, and put it about back where it was, about there. I don't think these are much of a precision instrument. Alternatively, you can also take out this screw here. I don't like messing with this. And if you're going to take out this screw, you're going to be messing around with the pressure from this spring. So oddly enough, this seems to work just fine with um, only the uh, Allen screw holding this in. And uh, it might even work better. It's interesting how the spring changes shape as it goes through the cycle. It's about here with the film in it. I have the extruders assembled, and if you look, um, if you look through here, you can see that generally the extruders themselves are only supported by the um, barrels of the, um, you know, the extruder barrels. And uh, this may seem bad, but uh, there's not too many forces on this. I mean, there's internal a lot of internal force between the, uh, as far as the film it's concerned, in going along the line of this. But um, there's only a little dragging motion on this, and um, I think this will be okay. And to uh, to adjust this, you would loosen up the bottom nut, and then somehow get a wrench in here, which is not going to be fun, but at least now it'll be possible. Adjust this. In here, see, there's the the top nut doesn't, be, you know, you don't once you have the top nut tight, you don't have to adjust it, and then you uh, loosen this one or this one and tighten it up and jam it against itself, like this, and get it fairly tight. And um, so I'm still tightening up the top ones a little bit. Make sure they're tight. You don't want to still you don't want to strip them out, but you don't want it to loosen up with thermal cycling. To do this modification, you'll need um, two uh, three millimeter screws that are five millimeters long, roughly. Uh, ten might work, but uh, eight might work. But uh, you you don't want them to be too long, or it'll hit this. Um, you might still have some, and um, if you built the printer, you still might have some extras. Um, you also need um, at least two jam nuts. Uh, the the printer came with uh, two, and uh, you would need two more, and um. I really recommend getting four jam nuts. Jam nut is just a nut that's a little bit thinner than the rest. You can see that this nut and this nut are a different height. So I would really get uh, four four jam nuts. And these are six millimeter threads, metric. And uh, besides the two uh, the two uh, three millimeter screws, that's all you need for parts. And you can see now that this whole thing is just floating on these two um, extruder um, tubes. So. And from a heat standpoint, that's not bad because there'll be less heat transferred. Um, you can see that we've, because we've removed the uh, screw from here, that we have now we have clearance to adjust these. And to adjust them, what we do is loosen up this screw 
and then adjust you know to this one and this one to which to um, raise and lower the entire uh, extruder assembly with the uh, with the uh, motor and then tighten up one of the jam nuts you usually would end up in the end tighten up this jam nut and while this isn't going to be easy at least now it's possible to adjust this and um, that was the whole point of this I had leveled the print bed um, at least horizontally in front um, so I'm about a paper thickness on the left-hand um, extruder nozzle, but the right is still a little extra high. So I loosen this lower nut like this, which is not easy, but at least it's possible now. Like that. And uh, let's see. And now, let's see, now I've got to actually loosen up the top one to let it go down. To do that, I'm just using a, a, a scribe. And uh, I'm thinking I could just turn it easy, like so. There. That's a little too much. But you get the idea. I'm going to back off on this just a little bit. I could probably use a piece of paper too under here. Actually, that's pretty close right there. Let's get the paper out. And now, if I tighten the bottom nut, I don't know how you're supposed to do this when the printer, you know, when the printer uh, was originally designed. I just I tried it. it just it just wasn't possible. And uh, I think that other people use these this type of extruder bracket for different kinds of printers, the dual extruder. And uh, it would be nice also if it worked. Well, it's not bad. Um, it just barely drags on this side. And I guess if I really mess with it, I can get it closer. And there's a small chance I might have to, but it drags on both sides, so I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, I'm kind of move it here and check it and move it there, try to do it in the same place. But I think this is a success. And uh, like I said, I don't know how this was supposed to work as designed, um, but uh, this uh, this is this is doable. And uh, so I think it'd be a good modification for people who have this printer. And it's as far as I can tell, it's totally reversible. Of course, still. Um, you know, if you modify your printer using any instructions on this, you do so at your own risk. But, um, and always be careful, you know, make sure wires aren't frayed. And um, myself, I don't usually leave my printer unattended for a long time. I might go and get a cup of coffee or something, but that's me.